It's been an unfortunate week. Golf. Soccer. Journalism. He has a control on everything. He is creating an environment of intimidation and, and fear. It's been three months since the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, and his body still hasn't been found. And a sovereign wealth fund with $650 billion in global investment. Somehow, all these things crescendoed in mid-2023 when Liv and the PGA Golf Tour merged. What am I talking about? Well, let's start at the beginning. In 2015, Mohammed bin Salman became the official ruler of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and essentially controlled their vast fortune. They began the practice of something that had been started earlier by former Russian oligarchs, something considered sports washing. It's where to cover up your potential human rights violations or political leanings that aren't necessarily popular, you invest in things that people consider bipartisan, sports. People would remember Roman Abramovich, a Russian oligarch, essentially purchased Chelsea Football Club and for years was able to maintain ownership of that club with no one asking any question about all the money that he was splashing around. They were just happy for the titles. The PIF, which is the Public Investment Fund, is essentially Saudi Arabia's attempt at investing in multiple businesses as well as different sports. The investments in the PIF range from Berkshire Hathaway, Citigroup, Nintendo, Activision, Boeing. I mean, these are wide ranging investments across a vast amount of different disciplines. But it all seemed to come to a head in 2022 when the PIF put their foray into golf by launching the Live Tour. To fend off this attack, the PGA Tour executives went to bring attention to what some felt were the most egregious of Saudi Arabia's human rights violations. 9-11 families united sent a letter to the representatives of Phil, Dustin, Bryson, Reed, and others, quote, expressing their outrage towards the golfers for participating in the new league and accusing them of sports washing and betraying the United States. I think you'd have to be living under a rock to not know that there are significant implications. And as it relates to the families of 9-11, uh, I have two families that are close to me that lost loved ones. And so my heart goes out to them. And I would ask, you know, any player that has left or any player that would ever consider leaving have you ever had to apologize for being a member of the PGA Tour? Huge controversy swirling around golfer Greg Norman, who was defending the creation of this Saudi golf league and brushing off the role of the country and the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, allegedly played in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. This is what Norman said, quote, the whole thing about Saudi Arabia and Khashoggi and human rights, talk about it, but also talk about the good that the country is doing in changing its culture. We've all made mistakes, and you just want to learn by those mistakes and how you can correct them going forward. The bigger issue, of course, is, that, is why is Greg Norman saying these things? And the answer is very simple. He's doing it for the money. He's getting paid. In preparation for marriage, Jamal Khashoggi entered the Saudi Arabian consulate in Turkey in October of 2017 and never left. After weeks and weeks of delay tactics and misdirection, in 2018, the CIA confirmed that Jamal Khashoggi had been assassinated inside the consulate upon the orders of Mohammed bin Salman. The nation had claimed a clear assassination of what was a sovereign individual on foreign territory. In response, they employed an American marketing and consultancy firm, and they employed them $120,000 a month to try and repair their image. But this wasn't enough for the PGA Tour. You could not separate Saudi Arabia from this foreign fund. When gearing up for the fight against Liv, the PGA Tour pulled no punches. I still hit Liv. Like, I hit Liv. Like, I, I hope it goes away. They did not even hesitate against going after their own. Obviously, which for creating a new breakaway golf circuit, you need players. And where are the best and most known players? The PGA Tour. So in order to bring and entice players over from the PGA Tour over to Liv, Liv was able to produce additional money. 
After $74 million in career earnings since 2008, Liv was able to entice Dustin Johnson, former world number one, over to the Liv Golf Tour with an offer of $150 million, almost double his career earnings. At the tender age of 52, they were able to entice Phil Mickelson over with an offer of $200 million. How did the PGA Tour respond? Sadly, 21 years later, some of our top American golfers have forgotten the pain and suffering perpetrated on the 9-11 community as they were enticed by the riches being offered by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. These golfers made a choice to turn their backs on their country and the 9-11 community by partnering with the Kingdom and agreeing to use golf to try to improve Saudi Arabia's tainted image. Worse, they knew exactly who they were getting in bed with. They simply did not care. Let me remind you what Phil Mickelson told one writer about the Saudis when he thought he was speaking privately. Quote, they're scary mother effers to get involved with. We know they killed Khashoggi and have a horrible record on human rights. They execute people over there for being gay. Yet just days later, Phil partnered with the kingdom for a reported $200 million contract. When you partner with a country that stands in stark opposition to American ideals and often ranks amongst, amongst one of the worst human rights abusers in the world, you aren't just playing golf. You're taking a political stance. These guys were vilified in the media. They were making them political figures, taking such a strong stance because of course, morality has no dollar figure. Morality has no compromise. They had committed and bedded down that they were gonna be fighting this war against what they felt was blood money as long as it could last. I couldn't be more excited about where we go from here, Jim. It lasted until June of 2023, when over Twitter, every single golfer in the PGA Tour was notified that Live Golf and the PGA would be merging. This news uh, was a shock to many, including to a lot of our players. It's hard for me to not sit up here and feel somewhat like a sacrificial lamb and, you know, feeling like I've put myself out there and... This is what happens. Again, removing myself from the situation, I see how this is better for the game of golf. There's no denying that. But for me as an individual, yeah, I, there's just gonna have to be conversations that are had. Terry, uh, what are you hearing from other 9-11 families today? Everyone is feeling the same way. Outraged, disappointed, angry, disgusted that, Cher that um, Monaghan could now sell the PGA to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia knowing that they are culpable in murdering our loved ones. He used the 9-11 family's storyline, our pain and our suffering, to promote his choice to say no to everything about Liv a year ago. He sold out every single one of us. He turned his back on the 9-11 community and he sold out his players, his fans, the golf base, the American people. And for what? Despicable, there's words I can't use on TV, but he really is the lowest, you know, scum of the earth at this moment. As we sit here today, I understand the criticism I'm receiving um, around the hip hypocrisy and me being hypocritical given my commentary and my actions over, you know, over the last couple of years. But again, as we sit here today, I'm confident uh, that we've done something that's in the best interest of our sport and ultimately in the best interest of PGA Tour members. The PGA Tour is in a control position with a productive investor. Anyone that is involved with Liv now would answer to Jay. So, you know, the PGA Tour have, have control of everything and whether you like it or not, the PIF are gonna keep spending money in golf. At least the PGA Tour now controls how that money is spent. But the terms of the merger with Liv and PIF suggested and stated and that the first right of refusal for new investment would be the PIF their investments aren't gonna stop. They're an investment fund. The source of their capital is the riches of the region from which they come. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has always been a region of great riches. I don't think that will stop anytime soon. Another commentary might be though that their positions and decisions as it pertains to human rights might also not stop. When heavyweight champion of the world, Anthony Joshua was looking to rematch Andy Ruiz, they held the rematch in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Formula One, one of the fastest growing sports over the past 
five years, holds a race in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and one of the largest investors into Formula One is the PIF. It's not going to stop on either side, unfortunately, the investment or the violations. Because the truth is that as a society, we haven't made either cost as much as it should.